Good afternoon, y'all. How's your Edwards notion going so far? Can we get a bigger hand than that? Because this has been an awesome fucking conference. So it's fair to say that the last few weeks have been an amazing uh, pro proud moment for on LGBT issues, especially LGBT issues that have been shown the spotlight at previous Netroots Nation. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen the federal government chart a course towards open trans military service. We've seen a serious crack in the Boy Scouts anti-gay uh, leaders uh, position. And just yesterday, we saw the EEOC rule that the Civil Rights Act bars non discrimination in the workplace based on sexual orientation and gender identity and expression. Can we get a bigger hand for that? Now, and of course, last month, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Freedom to Marry nationwide. Now, Freedom to Marry, which is the organization that I have worked for for the last six years, we started with the mission that we would build a campaign to win marriage nationwide. And last month, I think we can now say that in partnership with organizations, advocates, and activists from across the country, including a lot of you, that we are now the campaign that has won marriage equality nationwide. In red, blue, and purple states across the country, including states where there are currently no other LGBT protections, same-sex couples are now free to say, I do. Now, the important thing to remember is that we did not fight alone. Many in the LGBT community and straight people who love us fought, organized, and dreamed of the day that same-sex couples could publicly celebrate their love by saying, I do and have their marriages respected across the entire country so that it's not just legal in New York, it's not just legal in California, it's legal here in Arizona, it's legal in my home state of Texas, it's legal in Alabama, and across the entire United States. You should feel free to clap. We, we want to make sure that you're boisterous and excited. Now we've won the freedom to marry and that's a huge achievement that we should all be proud of. And as we celebrate this tremendous victory, we must remember a key important thing, that there is a lot of work left to be done to achieve full LGBT equality and we can't do it alone. Thank you. Good afternoon, progressives. So we have marriage equality, but how can we dream of walking down the aisle when so many in our community cannot, walk safe down, uh, cannot safely walk down the street? How can we celebrate wedding bells when so many queer and trans people across the country can only hear death knells? Success breeds backlash. It always has, it always will and the violence we are facing now is especially severe. In a country in which black and brown bodies are expendable, in a country in which white supremacy is pervasive, in a country in which Sandra Bland dies after a traffic stop, and Kai Peterson is imprisoned and brutalized for killing his rapist, the backlash in a post-marriage world will continue to escalate. From violent graffiti on our buildings, to the weaponization of religion, to the blood of transgender women of color running through our streets, the violence shows no sign of letting up, and we cannot fight alone. Our call today is a call for liberation. Liberation rooted in and led by those who have always been at the front lines of the LGBTQ community and yet have been erased from it in our effort to sanitize and normalize our lives. We must fix our eyes not simply on equality, but on liberation. Hi everyone, good afternoon folks. You know, the struggle for liberation is nothing new. 
we should never forget that our movement started with the legacy of Sylvia Rivera, Marsha P. Johnson, and Miss Major. These were key figures in our movement for liberation, and they were trans women of color. You know, I am tired of the violence that trans women of color are facing. I'm tired of the abuse, and I'm tired of transphobia. As a result, I started getting involved in activism, and I participated at the Lone Beach Pride, because what this trans woman of color taught me is that their resistance it's my resistance. And it should be remembered that we have to, I'll take a personal and act in acts of civil disobedience any given time unapologetically because it is much needed. <laughs> By participating in these demonstrations with most of the people in attendance were celebrating, to me, we have a message of urgency. So far in this year alone, 15, excuse me, nine transgender women of color have been officially reported. That to me is unacceptable. I've also participated in demonstrations where I have blocked intersections to bring awareness to this issue and that the violence that we're facing. The transgender community, especially transgender women of color, have been part of the struggle for years. And it is the time to start listening to the voices that started the movement over 45 years ago. So to me, liberation, it's very symbolic. I have to continue the fight for our lives. I want to live in a space, in a nation, where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. Thank you.